Hey everybody. Um, so, I um, this is one of the pipes I got from Tree. Oh, the lighting is in the wrong place. And this one is a no-name pipe. I mean, the original trade that we did was for a couple of bar barling stumbles, um, which uh, are going to need some attention. Um, but this one is in pretty good shape. Um, the mortise is too large for me to make a 9mm. Um, well, I could sort of make a custom-made tenon and drill it for a 9mm filter, so it would be bigger than the usual tenons that I use for my uh, stems. However, <clears throat> I had an idea, which I think is a nice idea. Um, tree smokes pipes, I think, without filters, generally speaking. I thought it would be nice, as a thank you for the gifts that he sent me, for the stumbles that he sent me, um, is to just um, refurbish one of these and give it some of my uh, staining love um, and send it back to him. So the, get rid of the oxidize, oxidization on here. Um, it's got some lovely, really beautiful... You can't really see it here, bird's eyes, but uh, you know what, I'm going to reverse this so you can see it better. All right, so perhaps this will be better. There you go. Just look at that bird's eye. A couple of little fills there, um, but that doesn't matter. I don't think Tree will be too worried about that. Um, but uh, the grain, you know, traditionally, especially the English companies, um, historically, didn't do much about bringing out the grain. It was more about, and it was an overall colour stain, um, and the grain was the grain. Um, but this has got some cross grain there, and it's got bird's eye all over the place. It's a, a bit of a multi-grain kind of pipe. Um, nice cross grain going across the top there. Um, so it says all, all it's got on it is made in England. So I can see that it's an English pipe, but I've got no idea which company made it. Um, for all I know, it could be a second pipe from a really uh, decent uh, brand. It really feels well made. Um, so I'm just going to refurbish this and send it back to him. Um, and uh, see what he thinks. So I'll only publish this video once um, I've done that. Um, but I'm going to show you the different stages of the uh, refurbishing. So the first thing I'm going to do is just sand the whole thing. Now I've got no idea how old this is. I would imagine it's probably from um, the 50s, 60s, something like that, maybe 70s. Um, <clears throat> so um, there's probably some patina in there. Uh, the briar may well be quite dark even after sanding, so we just have to see how that comes through. I'm going to start off with a 320 grit um, and take it up to 600 and then stain it. find often that when you restore um, an oldish pipe, you often get the aromas <clears throat> and the different layers of aroma coming out of the pipe. Oftentimes a pipe won't get up, give off much of an aroma, start sanding it and you'll start to get Latakia or Lakeland and that kind of thing coming through. The risk of doing this, obviously, is that you might come across a serious flaw, a fill, or something that's really, that was very well hidden beforehand. And look, you've got one there. So sometimes you see darker spots in the staining. See that there? Right there, there's a really, quite a significant fill. So that's really an answer to my point I made earlier on about the darker stains is because they have to hide a lot of sins. But I will do my best. Hopefully there won't be too many. But in the course of the staining, I'll do my best to hide it as much as possible. Sorry, the angle's a bit off.
when you're dealing with a straight walled pipe, you know, you always get nervous about um, deviating the ring, the, the circular shape of the rim. As long as you're going up in a straight motion, it follows the line and you're generally pretty safe. It's when you do that kind of thing at an angle that you start messing around with the rim, the shape of the rim. So you just have to be careful with that. That you try to just keep things straight as you're sanding. So it really retains the original shape of the rim. I'm not big into restorations, I must be honest. Um, I do them every so often. I've had a couple of requests for restorations which I've turned down. Because <clears throat> usually, a lot of the restoration requests are for stem issues. And um, I'm not really geared up for stem repairs. Um, I got one over the weekend, a request to refurbish a pipe. Um, and I just passed them on to Mike Billington at Blake Mar Briars. It's, it's the most advisable thing to do, and it's the most sensible thing for me to do if I'm being honest with my customers. I want to try and retain that made in England, which is very, very small there. And I don't mind sanding the stem because I've got to sand it anyway to get rid of that oxi oxidation or oxidization. Sure it's lined up when I'm sanding. Yeah, that's okay. Most of the stem I'll have to do by the shank I'll have to do by hand anyway to get into the nooks and crannies. I just realized I should have taken some pictures, proper pictures to do before and after. I'll have to take it from the video, the screen grab. Not as good, but at least we'll get an idea. What I will say, if people are interested in restoration, when it comes to, if the stem is good, and it's just a matter of cleaning up and restoring the stain, putting a fresh stain on it, that I would be happy to do. Um, it's an area which I'm more than comfortable with. So if any of you do want to refresh some of your pipes, I'm more than happy to give that a go. Probably only worthwhile doing on some really favourite pipes that you really want to give a new lease of life. I wouldn't do it to a basket pipe because uh, it's just not worth it, it's not really financially viable. Well, unless that basket pipe means a lot to you and is one of your great smokers, then for sure. But uh, the downside of that is that because it's a basket pipe, the likelihood of lots of fills and flaws is greater. So I showed you those little fills in the bird's eye before. You can see them there. There's one of them there. I'm curious to see if that one goes through. We 
it'd be difficult to say without going down to bare wood internally, which I don't intend to do. Generally speaking, I wouldn't do that when restoring a pipe, personally. For one, you've lost the benefit of any breaking in that's already been done to the pipe. Take it back to bare wood, you've got to start all over again. But you really do run the risk of any blemishes that are lurking beneath really coming to the fore. And when they break it in again, there's always the risk of cracking again, if there is anything serious. I started listening to Jason Mouton's interview with the cane rod piper. There's quite a few deep couches, like dings here. I would imagine as a result of going in and out of um, a pipe stand that some, you know, throughout its life. So I'm going to sand those out. Um, I'm about a quarter of the way through Jason's uh, video with Mike, and they're really very interesting. It's really enlightening to listen to pipe makers to see the things, the stages that they've gone through. Interesting to see him say, to hear him say that his, the worst part of pipe making for him is sanding. He hates sanding. And I must admit that for me, I had the same, but I've learned to um, appreciate the value of sanding, uh, especially more latterly um, over the past month or so, and I've really spent so much more time hand sanding, and I think you can see the difference in the result of the pipes as well. I mean, you, you would be able to be a better judge, objectively anyway, and I, I can certainly see myself the difference, but in the final result, to the customer or the viewer to see whether that's uh, worthwhile. <laughs> Only you can say that. But I certainly, from my perspective as the pipe maker, do see a benefit in the hand sanding. When I started, I really geared myself up to do as much as possible um, using machines. So that's why I, I got the various different disc sanders which took me up all the way to 400 grit. But um, now, on the lathe, I used to go up to 600 and 800 before I took it off the lathe, off the lathe, off the lathe. But now I'll maybe go to 400, but I usually sand it all back anyway. 
um, and I'll go to 400 on the lathe simply to, to help in the shaping so that it's a really nice uniform shape. So I'll usually sand it back to 320 again, then go to 400, then 600. I rarely go above 600 now. I used to go 800, 1000, 1200 even. Um, but um, I find that um, the returns diminish as you go higher. <clears throat> for, for a number of reasons. Um, because when you put stain on, that's also a little bit of a leveler. And um, for sure, the more time you spend sanding, before staining, the better the result, that's for sure. But for me, I, I see diminishing returns beyond 600. In fact, um, as far as I know, people like Ian Walker, they don't go beyond 400. I think, or either him, either it was either him or Mike Billington who told me that, that he never goes beyond 400. And at the time, I was quite surprised when I heard that, but now, Making, making the pipes myself, I can see that. I really can. You know, unless you're really up in the high ends with with stunning, uh, absolutely pristine blocks, where you just have to make sure that it's like a glass finish. Other than that, I mean, I was reading actually over the weekend, Julius Vest in Can in Canada, and um, he doesn't actually put any finishing on his pipes. He doesn't believe in sealing the wood. So his are, are pretty much matte. Which I thought was interesting. Uh, he certainly has a product which he believes in and he's been making pipes for like 60 years or something. And he's well in his 80s now. And I still would like to get one just to say that I've got one. There's a lot of makers that Although I'm not collecting pipes so much these days, but there are a lot of makers that I would like to just have one of their pipes to say that I've got a pipe of theirs. It doesn't really matter about the grade of their pipes. It's their story, it's their life story, their history, their backstory. Or it might be somebody who you've seen um, sort of progress um, you know, in your lifetime. So somebody like, for instance, Jason Mouton, Speaking of Jason, um, you know, relatively new. I mean, if he's new, then I'm just in infancy, but, um, you know, it would be nice to have one of his pipes because it's somebody that I that to get to know over the YTPC. Um, so that has meaning. Anyhow, I'm going to carry on sanding and get it ready for staining and I'll come back when it's ready for that. As soon as my phone decides to respond. I've decided to also do a little bit of reshaping on the bit, which I wouldn't usually have done. I would have left it to be sort of remain faithful to the original thing, but it was actually quite sharp edges and quite angular. So you can see I've done one side of the button. You see one side is more rounded, that side is rounded over. You probably can't get it. It's not focusing because it's a FaceTime camera, but I'm doing that as well. All right, so I'm ready to start staining. Um, I've gone up to 600 grit and I've done the main basic polishing of the stem. As you can see, it's come up really nice so far. I've reshaped the bit. And that should be really comfortable to clench. And I'm going to stain. So I'm giving it a stain which will give me the ability to contrast over uh, the fills and hopefully um, it'll all work out fine.
this kind of mixed um, kind of grain was quite common um, and it still is really um, on the lower end of pipes um, you know if you go to Savinelli's even Dunhill's to be honest um, they just take a bowl and and stain it and um, it's really only the exceptional ones that get taken aside uh, for a higher grade uh, and sometimes you can get lucky in reverse order you can get something which is a lower grade but actually displays a really nice grain um, like I said the other day on the Nirup Bulldog that I used to have that was a good example a stunning grain had a tiny sand spot on it hence it was sort of downgraded but it was a great pipe to look at and the smokability of it was the same as any of the other pipes I'm not going to put too many layers on this because there's a patina in there already so the, the briar is darkened by absorbing the tobacco over the years of it being smoked it is actually in really good condition so i haven't had to do too much really to be honest other than sanding it and getting the sheen back on the stem um, i mean the, the rim is pretty crisp very very little wrong with it so it should give a decent result Right, we're pretty much there, there's very little residue on there, um, so that's not firing up. But that's where we are, nice little pot, bent pot. I'm going to leave that to dry, soak in, and I will do the finishing off of the stain later on today. So I will catch you with that later on. Okay, so I've been in the workshop for a good while now. In that time, I've done quite a bit of work, but included in that is I've finished um, the pipe that I was restoring. And it is a bit dusty in here. I'm just trying to clean it down a bit. Sorry to keep here. So what I've done is essentially is I've tried to remain faithful to the original style and staining, you know, of, of traditional pipes, but at the same time brightening it up a little bit, but to also trying to protect those uh, fills that we had and trying to absorb those into the staining. So here's the result. So if you remember all that beautiful bird's eye on the side, so I've brought some of that to life. You can still see those little fills there, but those are okay because they could be seen as eyes of, of the bird's eye. And there's that fill up there. You can see it, but at least it's absorbed. Got that nice bird's eye there again. And also just brought out that straight grain, that cross grain there. And the Made in England is still there. And we've got rid of all the oxi oxidization that's nice and shiny and polished, but it's just attracting a lot of dust because of the uh, static, but it's nice and clean. So this is going to be winging its way over to tree. And um, there you go, the top as well. It's come out nice. Um, so hopefully he'll enjoy smoking that. And once he receives it, then I will upload this video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope that's been of interest. I'll catch you on the next one.